put some more light in here. Uh, but um, what starts to happen, let me do one more thing here. Do that. Um, a lot of times, though, uh, on this platform, I don't really talk too much about leaving the narcissist, but I wanted to do that with you. Um, yeah. I love the video that you have discussing that. Uh, when you had you, you posted that video, and I was going like, dude, that should have been longer. <laughs> I was going like, keep going, man. Just keep talking right. about it. Do a part two and three. To, to part okay. two. Part right, so it's a lot more to it. <laughs> yeah, I hope. I hope so. I, I don't want to steal uh, too much of your thunder when it comes to talking about that, but I wanted to touch on it. You good? We can and go off. Okay. All right. Um, because I wanted people to know it, it, it's out there, that the video's out there, that you're out there. What's happening with somebody kidnap, hijack your account, man? Oh, yeah, some dude. Not that you want to talk about that. I just want to get that out the way because I had a few people ask because they were looking for you after you had been on the show and they could, you know, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, my new account is Leon R. Walker. He took it. It was the old one was I Inspired One. So do yeah. not go to I Inspired One. He took it. Then he had nerd to ask me for money. Some little weasel overseas. I can tell he was the way he was. His grammar was money. Send me money. Send me money. You get your account back. Send me money, man. Yeah. So I let it go. I was hot for a while. Yeah. But I, yeah. yeah. Well. Well. I tell you what. Let's transition into something else. Um, let's get hot about this subject. We don't tell people to do something. Leave. We're highlighting what they can do to leave a narcissist, how would you describe it? Because I know how I would say it, but I might say it wrong. How, yeah. how, do you, how would you describe it? Because you're the one leading the conversation. Right. First, I never tell any women, a man or woman to leave their, their partner because they love them, they like them for whatever reason. They're addicted to them, attracted to them for whatever reason. It hurts to walk away. It hurts to leave somebody. And some women leave and go back. Some women leave and go back and get killed. Some, women, some men leave and go back and get murdered too, you know? So I tell them this. First of all, no... no we use this word, know your worth. We use it loosely. We do. And you need to know what you bring to the table, right? But you need to know what that person brings to the table. And a lot of times that other person, what they bring to the table is a notion to take what you bring to the table. And so a lot of people, not just women, men too, um, get into relationships not knowing the person that they're dating. Uh, the women that I dated over... 30, 40 years, none of them knew who I really was. I hid it well. I had a lot of flaws, uh, a lot of indiscretions. I had a lot of weaknesses. Uh, I was insecure about a lot of things. Yeah, I was in the Navy. Uh, I was always in shape, head full of hair, took care of my hair, took my nails, uh, decent looking guy, and that lured women in. But after I got him, I couldn't hold him. I didn't have longevity or staying power, and I didn't care to have longevity or staying power. But they didn't know that, and so I was very... Uh, I misused women. I didn't take anybody's money. And I always pride myself on, well, I didn't, I didn't take the money. I didn't take sex from them, but I was taking their heart, you know, and that's the worst thing you could do. And they're mine. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I didn't look at it as that. I blocked that out because I knew deep down inside I was a good person, decent person. But I allowed my past to control me and lead me down this path where I became comfortable with being verbally abusive, with being a cheater. Um, so my thing is when you, when you decide to walk away, first of all, no what you're walking away from. You have to realize that that person is not in it for you. That person is not who you think they are. You're seeing a representation of that person. That's who these women saw in me, a representation. I was fake and phony for a long time. And then when I met the good, strong, solid women, I didn't even know what to do with them. You know, sexually, I was comfortable. Conversation-wise, I was comfortable. But commitment, I was very uncomfortable because I always blame my past on my present as far as not being able to commit. Not wanting to commit. Oh, my parents got divorced. My mom left me. My mom gave me away. And that was my excuse. So I'm like emotionally detached in every relationship I got into, which was nothing more than an excuse. Because had I, even if I didn't go through therapy, which I did, had I gone through therapy, even if I didn't go through, like I said, I still know as a grown man, I know better to not misuse women, not abuse women, not cheat, not lie. Tell the truth. Let them make the decision themselves. Don't take the decision out of a woman's hands. I did that for a long time. You know, when I was married for almost 12 years, my wife told me, you know, next time you do something, let me make the decision. Don't just lie to me. And she stayed with me for 12 years. Even though I cheated in the beginning, she stayed with me, you know. So I didn't deserve a good woman. I always had good women. I never deserved a good woman because I wasn't a good man. When you're leaving, you have to do it. You have, I got my notes here too, a lot. You mm -hmm. have to start slowly, ladies and gentlemen. You have to pull back slowly. So what happens is when you're leaving a narcissistic person, self-centered, egotistical, conceited, arrogant, cocky person. When you're leaving, 
you pay attention to what you are giving them, right? And when you start pulling that away little by little, you'll notice that they don't even notice that you're pulling away. Because narcissistic people, self-centered people are very selfish. They'll give you what they want you to give them. Narcissistic people are very are minimalist. When you pull back, you'll notice a couple of things. Wow, he or she didn't he or she didn't even notice that I was pulling back. Less phone calls, less text messages, not as many gifts, not always cooking at home, I'm not, not giving you massages, the clothes aren't always clean, the beds aren't always made. They won't even realize it. You realize at that time, you realize that they don't realize how good you are to them or how good you are for them. And you'll also realize that this fool hadn't even given me anything back. By by pulling back a little bit with this emotional minimalist, when we start pulling back, you're telling me that they're not really focusing on whatever it is we're pulling back inch by inch because, because they're not they're not giving us any help. That exactly, Pax, and they don't care. The stuff you give, a lot of women give from their heart, and they'll go, "Yes, oh, he yes." Didn't realize or went check this yes. out. When I got my, I got some streaks in my hair. I, I weighed myself today. I lost twelve pounds. He didn't even rec recognize me, yeah. Yeah. and that's because you. He's only concerned with what he wants for himself and not you. When a narcissist, right. so I was very manipulative. When a narcissistic person is given to a person, I was given to her because I wanted her to give me what I wanted, not what she wanted. Right? right. I was doing things too, or maybe for her because I wanted the same thing in return, at a at a low level. Now right. she's back more and on a grander scale uh more often i was like mm -hmm. if that to happen i just want a little bit i'm selfish not now right i'm selfish very selfish so i'm giving her what i want in return no more no less because i'm going to say i'm content narcissistic people are never really happy they are content because they're very selfish and self-centered so they're not going to go above and behind with reference to yeah committing you know a future marriage being engaged oh no i'm like like right here with that um uh -uh. we're going to be boyfriend and girlfriend forever and that's why i had a problem with marrying that's why i had a problem with being committed because i had two relationships both were six years of six years apiece and my marriage was almost 12 years that's almost 24 years back that i wasted uh, because I didn't go, I went into a relationship all high powered, happy go lucky, doing little things just to keep her, not to make her my wife, because I didn't even know how to be a husband. So, how am I going to make her my wife or ask her to marry me if I don't even know how to be a husband? If I don't know how to commit, I don't have longevity or staying power. It wasn't even in me, in me to have that. So, it wasn't going to happen. Very, yeah, so, it wasn't going to happen. No, nah, so I was very misleading, very misleading. And I know I'm a trigger to a lot of women, but I'm telling the truth. I want to help people. I want to help women not meet a man like we me, and I want to help men not become a man like I was. So when you well, put, well, I, I want to say this. I want to say this, and please, please continue. Um, I never. I have to tell you this. My audience has never seen you as as uh, quote unquote triggering or a number of other things, uh, whether that happens or not. Uh, I'm thoroughly uh, understanding of it, but uh, this is a discussion, uh, and I'm going to say this. Maybe you relate to it. This is a discussion that ha happens in a lot of communities whether it be the black community or other communities, people have these discussions all the time and they never talk about nothing being triggering. They, they get it out so that everybody gets the clear warning. And, uh, you know, you could get somebody, just bear with me and hold your thought, what you're going to say. You could get somebody that'll come straight out of prison and come back home to their neighborhood and get on a stoop or, or stand out there and tell everybody the facts. And nobody will say, hey, that's triggering because, you know, I was once robbed. Nobody, nobody will do that. They'll right. go like, you know, we, Please tell them what I've gone through and what you've caused, the pain you've caused. And that guy who is, as it were, had redemption and, and, and uh, repentance, as it were, he starts to tell the truth. Yeah. yeah, I remember when I used to do that. And nobody will say, hey, you know, that's triggering. You need to let's shun that person. So on this show, that's not where we're going with this. Um, whether it be from Sam Vacton I had on or to you and others that I've had, somebody will say one thing or another. But you see the comments are coming in. Uh, because people can relate and understand not just what has happened to them, but what was the motivation or lack of motivation of commitment to uh, from that person that they were dealing with. You're saying you were not committed. No matter how much you lured some woman in, unsuspecting woman in, who gave of herself, 
you were going only to be content with what you gave and please don't out give me because now that's pressure on me. Exactly. And I didn't know how to care if I hurt a woman. I could, like I told you before, I could hurt a woman and, and watch her cry and it wouldn't, I, w I didn't feel anything. In fact, when I made a woman cry. It excited, I, it excited you, in other words. Yeah, when I made women cry, it turned me on. And I, I thought that was, at first it was weird, but then I started liking it. Then I got used to it. Then it gave me a sense of power. Power. Yeah, when a woman cries, that's, that's serious. And so yes. it's very emotional. And for me, I stopped crying as a kid. So crying to me was like, didn't mean anything. And so I had to learn how, well, what do I do? Normally when a woman cried, if I, did, if I got turned on, I sat there and whatever happened. But most times when she cried, I walk away. I would get pissed and walk away. Like, what are you crying for? I just did this or I just called your name, you know? So it didn't mean, man, it, it was horrible. So let, let, me, let me just put something to that because a number of people who watch the show have often mentioned they cried and then the, the narcissist or the, uh, the toxic person didn't acknowledge it. Oh, no. But you're saying you didn't acknowledge it because to you, whatever was said and done was so small. I don't. It was like, it was as if you didn't do anything. It and was I, just a normal course of the way we're supposed to treat each other. I didn't even get to the point of doing something you should cry for yet, is exactly. what you're saying. And being emotional detached and dealing with emotional dysregulation, the crying didn't didn't bother me at all. It, it was didn't move. Didn't move the needle. Didn't move the needle at all. It did move the needle. It, it, it moved it to a, a, a lower standard for my emotions, which I didn't have any way. And so it was like, uh, all right, if she made me really mad, I'm, I'm, I walk away, I leave the house, I go drive, be gone for hours and come back like nothing ever happened. What was that like coming back as if nothing ever happened, knowing that you just, uh, you just caused a woman to, in her vulnerable state, to give way to tears? You want to know the truth or how it felt? Don't lie to me. You know, you know how this goes. I know what you mean. I know, yeah. I know you're asking me. I know what you're saying. But yeah, go ahead. It was a relief because it was like, oh, cool, bet. She ain't crying no more. We can move on with the day. I would like then we maybe go to the mall, go to the movies, go eat. And she was. So it, it's kind of like it's kind of like she just got this emotional burp out of the way. She just kind of like it's like I go. We got the crying out of the way. Now we now we can go be normal. Is the way yeah. you looked at it. To me, it was normal not to cry. And so when she stopped oh, crying, okay. right? So when she stopped crying, I'm like, all right, cool. We can, it's over. We're back to normal. We're back to normal. Yeah. So, I'll, yeah. Okay. I see from your perspective that it was normal to not cry. Okay. I can see what you're saying. The way you were thinking based upon the, the environment you were raised in and the way you, you began to live your life was that if we cry, just get it out of the way and then we can get back to normal. Or not cry at all. Or not, or just, yeah, I didn't think of that. Yeah, just, just don't do it. Just don't, just don't do it because now I'm getting pissed. Like, what the hell are you crying for? We supposed to be going to movies, we going to dinner, you crying and, you know, then we at, the, we at dinner, like, I'm at dinner, like, ooh, yummy, let's eat. And she's sitting there like, I'm like, why don't you straighten up? What's wrong? You know, still snapping. Okay, Leon. And I'm like, cool, bet. We eat and I go, it's like nothing, nothing happened. I'm like, crying is, don't mean anything to me. Your feelings are hurt. So what, Pax? And I, like I say, I'm in character now. I want y'all to know this is not who I am now. I think about all these things that I did and the way I was conducting myself and things that I said, and I don't even know how I got through that stuff. I don't know how I, I don't know how I lived like that. I don't, I don't know how you're alive because if one of my sisters had been with you, man, you'd have been. They would have never found you, man. My brothers would have yeah. found. No, I'm just, I shouldn't say that. Right. We'll get my brothers in trouble. <laughs> my sister, but, but you're talking about the emotions that are behind the person expressing themselves through tears. She's expressing. You could not even connect with the fact that she had emotions behind those. You're saying, hey, you got food in front of you. We're going to go to the movies. What else could you be living for? Your emotions are taking too much of my time and my energy. Just shove them aside the way I do mine is essentially what you're saying. And I expected that. And two things would happen, maybe more, but two things I know would happen. Um, I would Sometimes I would kiss her, and if she started to hug me and – hold me and then it would be t it would turn into passion for you and then for her it had to be for her because oh, of course of course you without a doubt but i mean but you for you it would turn that way yeah but any emo any emotions that came before that in regards to her crying or anything like that was non-existent for you 
No. But you had no problem leaning into quote unquote passion, but but lust. Because it was all, all about me. It was yeah. It was something you were self absorbed. It was it was. I'm gonna get a reward out of this. The crying I get no reward out of. Right. So my two things: making her cry was my reward, and stopping her from crying and making love to me was my reward. I didn't care. Wow. And then after that, it was like, oh, that crying stuff, that's over. We're not even going to talk about that no more. Because you submitted to me. You shouldn't have submitted to me in that emotional state that you were in. And I didn't think that I was wrong. I would never admit to that. I would never admit to being wrong. As sick as that was. Wow. But yeah. Everything was about me. Sex, so so, go ahead. No, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sex, and, and lust, it was all about me. So if she started crying and if I, if. I went to kiss her. It was what mm. to console her. It was to turn it into passion, the heat of the heat of the moment to change things, to change her mindset, to change her emotional circuitry. That's what I was doing. That's if <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be, to 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 be being affectionate. Benefiting. Yeah, but if yeah. I didn't want to be affectionate, I would watch her cry and be like, "Look, when you cry, we can talk. If you ain't gonna stop crying, I'm out." And I would leave. I go drive, smoke, drink, whatever. So being committed to caring for her emotional stability and adding to to making her feel safe to 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 not just cry, but just to talk about what made her cry, which is essentially what she really wants to do. <laughs> well, I didn't want to hear you didn't want to get it. You didn't want. I'm just what I'm saying. You didn't want to. Yeah, because okay. she was going to drop truth. Whether you agreed with how she felt or not, she's still going to drop truth because it's her truth. And, so, and you didn't even want to give her the room no, to because, speak her truth. No, right, because if you start talking the truth, I know it's the truth. I don't want to hear the truth about my being inept or uncaring ways. I don't want to hear that. Now I'm going to get even more pissed. So if she kept talking and kept talking. Wow. Now I become very, very vindictive, Right to shut her mouth again. So that's when I talk about in the video, the silent treatment. Yeah, right. Next to her while she was talking and act like she wasn't there. If she wasn't going to be quiet, if she wanted to get it out, which most women want to communicate. Yes, of course. I, right. I sit there and just act like she wasn't there. Leon, can you hear me talking to you? And I watch the TV. After a few times, I'm like, you know what? I'm out. And I would go, we were gone for hours. No telling what I was doing. So, she wanted to normally discuss it. So now if anybody's listening to this, and some of you have been writing uh, feverishly here concerning what we're talking about uh, in the in the chat. Uh, so if somebody's experiencing this, you probably can relate to what Leon is saying. But what you're doing, Leon, is really giving them an insight as to the motivation behind if you go, hey, look, I'm out, okay, because I'm not going to have this discussion with you. And it's not like you're trying to keep the peace. That's not what you were trying to do, right? Well, you were trying to keep you're trying to keep the peace for yourself, per se. But you, but as a couple, you're like, man, I don't want to hear that. Yeah. But you you weren't willing to commit uh, to try to compliment her and say, hey, look, let me see what you're carrying and go ahead and bring it over here. And let me let me hear it. Let me hear it and let me help you carry it or let me carry it and let's talk about it. Once you weren't going to go down that road. Turn about that. Never, not for one second was I concerned about what she was carrying. Not at all. As long as I, I can still control her emotions. Um, her, she feed me. I feed her. Our, our needs. I fill our voids. Mainly, it was all about me. That what she was carrying, what she was carrying emotionally, the the burden of her childhood, her past, or that, in that, pain right at that moment. I didn't care. Reassuring her. Reassuring her. Uh, um, giving her a, a sense of stability, what would that look like coming from you? If you weren't going to do this, what we're talking about, like you're mentioning right now, because you're far removed from being that person that you were back then, but if you weren't going to reassure her the way you're saying now you should have done, how did you reassure her? Or did you even, what, what did you do to did you just buy her something or you just, just took her somewhere? Is that the way you considered letting her know that, hey, uh, I'm with you? Well, as many things that happen, uh, I'm a provider. I'm a giver. I, I like buying and giving and things like that. But when I know that a woman was deeply in love with me, 
when I knew that I was her drug, her upper, her downer, her anti. Yeah, right. When I knew all of that, I would tell her, I don't care if you leave me. I can care less. I'll find somebody to replace you 30 minutes from now. And I've said that to women. This is, this is, I'm going to tell you something. I got, you just said that to me. I just talked to somebody the other day and they told me the exact same thing happened to them and it was a guy. Yeah. A woman told just what you just said and he couldn't believe it. But yeah. what you're describing happened to him. And she took the kids and everything and left and told him what you what you just said. But she had been and he didn't know about narcissism. And, and and it's just an amazing thing that this could be male or female is what you're saying. Also. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of us are created by virtue of uh, dysfunctional childhood, being left out, left behind, broken, given up on, um, molested, raped, beat, bullied. Yeah. Cheated on. Oh, yeah. We are created. That's why people say, you guys will never change. Narcissists will never change. Psychologists told me this. Psychiatrists told me this. I'm like, you can change if you want to. God created us to be loving, caring, affectionate, Absolutely. leading, following type of people. That's mm -hmm. how we're born. Narcissists are made and created by dysfunctional households, bullying, getting beat, rape, um, assaulted, all that. And then you become that person. I became this person after being molested, raped, bullied, beat up, all this stuff as a child. After losing our house, my parents divorced at 11 years old. I was like, I'm done with this. I'm done. And so I first started trying to commit suicide because I'm 11 years old. I don't have a way out. I don't know. I can't work. I don't have any money coming in. You know, I'm looking for somebody to help me, somebody to love me. Nobody was there. My parents were great, but when they got divorced, it was gone. Then they started fighting over the children, me and my sister and brother. And so I had an uncle that was touching me. So I'm like, I'm going to kill him. I shouldn't be thinking that way as an 11, 12-year-old kid. I should be playing football, riding you know, go-karts and playing basketball. I was, but my mind was consumed with the, with the, uh, the, the abuse, with the addictions, and the, the, the male member touched me, my cousins, my life, all that stuff. And so I'm like, I don't want love. I don't want to commit. No, to I don't want a family. I don't want kids. I'm, my mind was made up at, at like 11, 12 years old, Pax. You didn't want children. You didn't want family. Then you began to find a way. How did you say? You said the word lure to lure them in. Uh, you found a way to lure people into you. What type of? Go ahead. You were going to say something before okay. I asked that. Because, because I had soul ties as a kid. I be truly believe that from the people that molested me. I had sex demons, right? And being addicted to porn, I wanted that feeling. Having sex with my babysitter at eight. I wanted that feeling. Even though I was, I, there were times where I was scared of women, you know, because what happened to me, and then all of a sudden it's like, man, I'm, I desire women. I have a deep lust for women. I want all women all over the world. I want, 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 want. I wanted that feeling that my babysitter gave me when I was molested. And so I had to find a way to lure women in. And a lady called me on the radio show. She called me a predator. And she was right. I didn't, I never molested anybody. I never raped anybody. I don't touch people inappropriately. I don't do that. But I had to invite these women in by, making up this certain person and it was i was a facade i was fake but i was real any kind of way because i was in the military i had a, a decent background i had a job i had benefits i had a little bit of money i had a car and apartment the irresistible minimum is what i call it so i'm drawing i'm drawing them in to like me and i wasn't going to like them i was liking for a weekend that's about it my thing is all about sex and lust and greed you know and that was it it was all about feeding my demons my packs when, and when you when you had these relationships then if that's the case, it was almost as if the women, from an intimate standpoint, a sexual standpoint, were essentially babysitters for you. There was no real connection. You were still that eight-year-old boy reliving that moment stuck in time over and over. It, it, almost in essence, I don't know. I'm, this is ghetto therapy, man. Don't, don't mind me. I'm just bouncing stuff off the top of my head. It was over and over, um, and I... I I, I craved that attention. I craved the touch of a woman. I craved my ability. Then it became my ability to turn a woman out because what I saw in porn, I, I studied to hurt the women outside of porn. So it came to, it's like, it's like I didn't kill anybody, right? I've never been a serial killer, but I was a serial cheater. They all have the same type of mindset. 
to have yeah. a victim to have a victim to make me feel to create bad. that yeah right to have that victim create destruction for that other person to to feel empowered yeah to feel empowered to stroke my ego and then boom I'm gone Pax I could walk away I was conditioned to walk away from relationships as a child when my parents got divorced I don't blame my parents but my my parents got divorced I didn't know anything about family I didn't know anything about um unity I didn't know anything about commitment it was over. And I was happy with that. I was 11 years old on my own. Like, okay, bet, this is me, this is where I'm gonna be. I need to find a way through life because I wasn't going to college, I knew that. My parents dropped out in the ninth grade and I knew I wasn't going to college. And so the military was like the next thing, next best thing for me, but it was next worst thing for me too because I was exposed to free women all over the world that would just like roll a red carpet off of me. And I was very arrogant, very conceited, very cocky. And so I knew, I'm like, look, I ain't gonna love you. I don't know how to love. So then if I tell them that and they start liking me anyway, and we having sex or hanging out, I'm like, see, you knew in the beginning what I was about. And if you decide to stay, that's on you because I'm gonna leave eventually. We're going to, um, we're going to turn our, our attention to the chat uh, to see if we can kind of catch up a little bit. Um, but we're talking about a behavior that you say, even though others say can't be altered, you saying that it can't. It takes a lot of hard work, Pax. It, it, it's, it's a lot. It takes a lot, a lot of therapy. Uh, I saw my first psychiatrist in 1987, and I walked out of his office. I was 21. I saw my second cycle, my first psychotherapist in 2014. I walked out of her office. I saw my second psychiatrist in 2015. I walked out of her office, and then the social worker set me down back and forth in psychiatry for seven months. Uh, I didn't know how to forgive. I started. I learned how to forgive. I learned how to start. What, what were you for, What were you forgiven? I'm just going to ask real quick before yeah. you go on. My cousins that molested okay, me. Okay, got it, got it, okay. And so I was holding on to that. And so that I was carrying my past, my future. I was putting all that pain and agony on the other women. I was using my childhood as an excuse to, to bounce, to leave, to break away, to not commit, to not love. I was afraid because like, if my mother can hurt me, other women, uh, other women can hurt me. If my cousins can hurt me, other, if my babysitter can hurt me, Women are going to always hurt me. I say, you know what? That ain't going to happen no more. I don't care if she cry. I don't care if I cheat. I get caught. I didn't care, Pax. I don't care if I walk away from a relationship and she's finding somebody else. I'll find somebody else, too. I'll find two or three other women to replace her, right? To, to feel. I needed my voice to be filled. I needed my ego to be stroked all the time so that it made me feel comfortable. It made me feel powerful. Even though I wasn't any good, even though I was really a weak, broken, um, dis dysfunctional man, I, I hid that by having women constantly at my beck and call. So I was never without, like, I was never in tune with my weaknesses and never in tune with my so, inability to, to perform as a man in a relationship. Okay, so, so you weren't in tune to that, but you were in tune enough to keep up the facade that you had it together. Would you say that, uh, I'm going to say this wrong, what do you say, like the, the minimalist or whatever, you kept the you kept the minimum of what they needed to see intact, being in the military, whatever it may be, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. a place, uh, a car, whatever it may be, you kept it. So that at least the facade was, he's really got his act together and he's going to be able to take care of me and he's going to pro provide for me. He's your provider, your giver. You knew that being those aspects are who you are also. And so, being a yeah. provider and a giver. Yeah. Doing, all that, right. It was all of that was like, then it became breadcrumbing and, you know, gray rocking and all of that stuff. And um, the silent treatment and she's like, I'm tired of her. Let me move on. Let me start breaking her down minute by minute, hour by hour, because I knew I, I know I knew I know women well. And I use what I knew about women maliciously because um, I know they like to communicate. They like to be held. They like affection, even if it's that's the, the nonverbal communication. Right. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Hugging, holding. I knew what they liked when they wanted, when they needed it. Um, even though I like, I, I knew when a woman was coming off her her cycle that she's very her her hormones. She's are raging. So I knew then, or I, you know, within a two week time frame before her cycle, after cycle, she's ovulating, she's horny, whatever. I knew that, you know. So I could, if she wants wanted something, wanted to be held. If I was upset with her about whatever, I wouldn't hold her. I wouldn't touch her. I wouldn't. I would just starve her to death, you know, emotionally. This then, was a part of your pattern a to pattern. make sure it's a that you held, you held her in place and used her until you were not 
How can I put it? You essentially then moved on. Would you circle back around Always. and Hoover? Always. Always. Oh, yeah. Because you want to see how well they're, how well they're doing or how well they are not doing. You want to so know. When you, you want to know whether they forgot you or what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in most cases, they didn't. And if they didn't, the door was still slightly open for me. Even if it was open that much, I'm still going to get back into your life and start over again. But you're saying at the beginning, you mentioned um, this person cannot commit. They're emotionally detached. If someone is with somebody like that, that they're supposed to pull back slowly. Do you remember any women pulling back slowly or abruptly uh, as quickly as possible, cutting the uh, emotional and biblical cord from you? The, the, the one I talked about in the video I posted on TikTok, uh, yeah, she did it abruptly because I did it to her abruptly. And if you pay it, if you pay a narcissist, narcissist back, be very careful. Make sure you, you have security some kind of way locked down. I was trying not to smile when you said it, but the way you said it was like, unless you got a super suit, where's my super suit? Because I'm about to cut somebody. Because You need to be prepared Yeah, because if you're going to do it. And narcissistic people, they do stop. I, w I stalked my girlfriend. I didn't stalk her to hurt her. Let me tell you, let me make that clear. I didn't stalk her to hurt her. After, she, after I broke up with her, we went overseas. I was partying. Woo, yeah, having all these women, you know, a variety. To come back home, she got a boyfriend. Rightfully so, but I told her before I left, hey, I'm cheating on you. I don't like you. I don't even love you no more. Bounce. I'm gone. Right? As sick as I was. I come back and she was like, oh, I got company. You can't come over here. And I lost my mind. And so she stayed away. She stayed away. She stayed away. You and lost I, your mind. You lost your mind. Yeah. I'm sorry. When you say that, you say that's so cool. That needs to be a shirt, man. Hashtag I lost my mind. Lost. Make, a, make a narc lose his mind. I was chasing her, chasing her in San Diego, Pax, chasing all over the city, <laughs> going to her job, being at her apartment. No, Leon, stay away, stay away. She did good for three months, Pax, because I knew in about three months' time frame, I checked on her. You said I'm going to be in. We hover. We hover. We see the decline. The guy she dating, I'm like, oh, he ugly. Yeah, I ain't worried about him. So now my <laughs> This is serious, real story. Now my Oh, man. Right? Because I, I, narcissistic people will come back to hurt you and destroy you and leave again. I tell you, I did that. So I had as to many As many times as possible? Or do you... No, there's no end to it. There's no Really? Limit. There's no, there's no limit. We keep going. Ain't, going. ain't that kind of boring? Ain't that kind of boring you keep going no, back? And no, it's a thrill. When I tell you it's a thrill, Pax, it is a thrill when we come back and you take us back or we, or you get away from us and we chase and chase and we slowly bring you back in with a conversation or I see you out with your man and you look at me, hey, how you doing? Hey, you speak a smile. Don't you do that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. No. I'm going to tell you, ladies. If no you, smile. If you were the guy, if you left a narcissistic person, don't ever come back. Only time... You can come back. Only time you can allow him back. The only time is if he's gone through therapy, he's practicing his therapy, he's implementing his therapy, he's apologized, he understands, and he's going. He's helping other people and talking and talking and walking and walk. Like I, I'm not bragging, but like I do. This was hard for me, Pax, before I started talking about this, and it's it's not even hard now. It's very liberating for me to talk about it, and I love helping people. I get people unfollow me. I, they, I. You piss me off. You give me chills. You trigger me, Leon. I, I get it. I know I do. But this is what this is what I have to do to give back. This is part of yeah. my growth and development and my karma because yeah. I have some hard questions about myself from these women. Mostly women. I pass. I have to ask. I have to answer these questions. But back to what I was saying, as a narcissistic person, we hover, we stalk. My stalking was to to find out answers. Why did you leave me? Well, Leon, you pushed me away. You push me to the arms of another guy, and I'm crying. I never seen you cry before, Leon. And I was like, "Dang, I got her already, right?" Crying, please come back. Oh my, well, I never seen you cry, and she never saw me cry. Now, I have to humble myself. Now I'm very vulnerable, which a narcissistic person hates. That the vulnerable stage of a narcissistic person is by far the lowest we will go. And then after when we get to that level, right? And we start to come up again, and you start to come back. That's your worst mistake. Don't ever. Vindic you become. You go from vulnerable to vindictive, or what? Big time. So vulnerable is being vulnerable is to show her 
Oh, Leon, you care. You have a heart. No, the hell I don't. I'm just trying to get you back in so I can hurt you. This is the, my mind speaking to me, and it's, that's what I did. Like a narcissistic person can, can recover, can heal, get therapy, but they have to want it, and I wanted it. And so, yeah, you go from being vulnerable to allow her to come back in. Uh, you hover. You stalk. I did all of that. And then once I see her starting to fall off and my confidence coming back up, I'm going to make it 10 times worse. What, what I'm going to make 10 times worse or better is my intensity. Now I'm very affectionate all of a sudden. Now I'm holding hands. Now I'm hugging. And so I did that and got it back and then uh, I broke it off. I'm looking at uh, everybody talking here, many of them agreeing with you. Every, everybody's agreeing with you. Uh, uh, everyone that's uh, here in the chat working with one another, uh, continue to encourage each other. Um, there's so much here, my friend. There really is. You laid out so much that it started this, and we're not even close to all the things I wanted to talk about. But I'm going to read you a few. And uh, the book goddess says, from the heart, no. Uh, but what we do for them and don't do, some will notice and make moves to assure that we continue to perform. In other words, uh, as a narcissist, uh, the narcissist will continue to compliment if they want you to keep performing something that you're doing oh, that gratifies them. That's that's she, whoever who said that. That is on. That, that was that was a uh, Sherry, uh, the book goddess. That okay. is on point. She is one hundred percent accurate. To keep you going, to keep you performing, to fill your voice. Here's the thing. When I study went right, women like a man to listen. So I use that maliciously too, right? So I'm listening to conversations I've had with thousands of women, okay, thousands. And I find out what they want, what they need, what they desire. But I really hone, hone in on what their, their last boyfriend or husband wasn't doing or giving to them. Yeah, right, right, right. Right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what I pay attention to, and that's what I give them a little bit at a time, which is going to make her happy, which is going to make her perform, which is going to make her think, feel like we're together. I'm into her. She's into me. But she's right. I want to do the little things that she wasn't, she was crave, Leon, I was crave, I want this, I, you know, I need this, I never had this, I never had this conversation. I, and I, the whole time, I didn't care. I'm just trying to manipulate her to get her to continue to perform. And it could be complimenting her daily. Some women like words of affirmation. That's her love language. Some women mm -hmm. like uh, acts of service. Some women mm -hmm. like physical touch, communication, whatever the case may be. I was doing those things and didn't realize they were love languages. But I was doing them because they were the opposite of mine, which I had loveless languages. So me being an empty person with loveless languages, my acts... My loveless language, it wasn't acts of service. It was acts of disservice. It wasn't physical touch. It was a lack of touch. It wasn't communication. It was bad communication or no communication. But if I wanted to keep feeding my ego and my voice and keep women around me and have my ego, mm -hmm. I had to learn what their love languages were and then act accordingly or pay attention to those and then do that to keep her to perform. Like she said, she's right. You, you, you literally had to, you had to become whatever you needed to become to get your supply, but there was no commitment and care behind it. The only commitment I had was to what she needed at that moment. And when, so once I gave her what she needed at that moment and she wasn't starving for it anymore, then I would turn around and make her starve for it. Got it. Got it. You would create a scenario or a situation or whatever it may be so that she would be starved for it. And that way you keep her as it were, you became her drug. Yeah, I became her drug, and it was easy to come back in her life. I don't care if it was 30 days or 60 days. It was. You easy. didn't care whether she found out that you were being unfaithful uh, and, and, and fornicating and doing whatever you wanted to go do. You didn't matter to you, because as long as you knew how to give her that drug, you could get back in. And I was the only one that knew how to give her that drug. Because I listened to what she said. Leon, I've been through with all these guys. You're the first person. You're the first person. You're the first that was a green. That was a green light for you to do whatever you want to, and you could go be any kind of mean person you wanted to, and not care because you knew how to always make that light go from red to green. Yeah, and I was. It was wrong. It was dead wrong. Right from red to green, and then back to red again. Right. Yeah. So now, uh, oh, go ahead. I was going to read something else to you, but go ahead. No, you're going to leave and walk away. It's during 
the red light moment where it's either we're not talking and I'm not touching the holder. But when I come back, it's going to be during a green light moment for her. Only for me to get her to be able to come back in. Because I know. Green light moment for her. Yeah. What do you mean by that? I know what she needed and when she needed it and why she needed it. Got it. It could have been it could have been anything and it, it was it's never about money. It could have been a special gift. Because her last two boyfriends or her ex husband never yeah. got her gift on her birthday, he got it a day after her birthday. Dude, dude, they got it. Oh, dude, I can't believe you just said that. It just made me think I just talked to somebody who's gonna be on the show and she highlighted what he did to her was she was very sentimental about pictures, you know, like photos. And he had these photos that whenever he was, it was red to make it green, he would go, hey, I stumbled across this photo. There you go. And, I, and you know what? And I put it together for you with these other ones that I had. And, I, and I'm kind of, I can't even do the voice that she gave me. And, and when she did the voice, I was going like, Seriously? I said that, I wish I could record it and play it back because it sounds, it sounds so snake-like. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds so, it sounds so. And he, she said he had this entire voice every time he was coming back in before she ever learned about narcissism and that about the keep coming back thing. He kept ho or hoover, hoovering. Oh, and yeah. he was, and it was always pictures. She has all of these pictures that he gave her. They're not together anymore. He divorced them. All these pictures, and they came from him. But now, she, of course, she knows he only did it to get back in. I, I really should read to you some more that's happening. I mean, uh, oh, narcissism, away from what you were saying. Go ahead. People don't know how they don't like to be defeated. And we don't like to yeah. be. I couldn't stand being criticized. That burned my soul. Oh, no, I couldn't. Did from anybody? Me? From anybody? It didn't matter. Did, did you have to take it from a commander while you were? I was never really criticized. Yeah. And at, at, yeah. And. I would walk away from my boss like, like <laughs> <look real alive. laughs> you you just you were a bad dude, man. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 if we were in a barbershop somewhere, we, we we'd all be having fun with all the guys in the by the way, if anybody's watching this, this is as close as we can get on Instagram to having a barbershop conversation. Uh because it's it's clean. But <laughs> But speaking truth about things that somebody has done in their life is if anybody's ever wondering and you go into a, a, a predominantly a, a black community and you go and you go to the barbershop, that's better than watching TV, man. HBO ain't got nothing on a barbershop. <laughs> you go into a barbershop, you'll be hearing some stuff. You want to know what a hey, men can gossip, but men can also speak the truth, too. You can find out everything happening in the neighborhood. You go to a barbershop better than a beauty shop because the barbershop will tell you the truth. Go ahead. Potatoes bags for women that are listening and men. Um, if you leave when you leave, do not ever tell a narcissist why you left. You yeah, may say, I've heard that before. Why is that? Well, because you may say, Leon, you hurt my feelings, blah blah blah. You did this to that. Because what they are going to do, because at that moment in time, that woman is or man is strong enough to try to walk away, right? Right, but, correct. Uh, like, oh, she ain't going nowhere. She'll be back. I always said that to myself. So if you tell me what I didn't do or why you left or whatever, don't do that. Just leave. Go away. Forget I even existed. Try to hate me. Because if you tell me, I'm going to go and fix those things, and I'm going to come back worse, better. I call it worse, better. I'm going to come back better, but I'm going to be 10 times worse because I'm going to leave again. Because I'm going, I'm going to fix those things that you didn't like about me. I'm going to fix those things that I did wrong. I knew what I was doing wrong while I was there with you. I just didn't want to fix it because I didn't plan on staying with you. If I fix he, those things, we're going to be committed for a long time. I don't want that. Now you're stuck. Now, now the narcissist is stuck. Because right. they're making they're making progress in the eyes of the of the victim. And now they don't have power anymore. Now the victim, quote unquote, the victim does. You because on. now Now you have to submit. And now you're stuck in that relationship when all you really want to do is keep your happy feet. You that's, you want to be a, you want to be a runaway bride. You caught on to that pretty quick too. So that's how that works. But don't ever tell me why. Don't tell them. To, don't no. yeah. Don't even waste it. And you know some people want to do that because they say I want closure. So I want them to know. And you're like, nah. They knew what they were doing the whole time. Is what you're saying. Women want. So that's another thing. I stay away because I know you want closure. Leon, what did I do wrong? Leon? 
I ain't gonna tell you. I knew what not to tell you, but you didn't know what not, what not to tell me. You told me everything. And then I just doubled down on my weaknesses and came back and my weaknesses became my strengths for you. Therefore, I become more of a drug to you. And it's hard because for you to let go because it's not hard for me to let go. I'm emotionally detached. I'm gonna let go anyway. But now I got five women that I can do the same thing too. I don't, I don't change my game up. I don't change. I just do repeat the same thing with different women. I don't change. Only thing that changes are the women. My game is still the same because this with, one with each me. woman with each woman yeah yeah this woman yeah. doesn't know me but she's gonna find out and this and this and this and then before you know it yeah. they all talking about me like okay yeah I did that what's up and some women yeah. are attracted to dysfunctional broken I was men. gonna yeah that actually the show was gonna I was gonna end the show on that we're not ending it at this moment but I'm gonna tell you that's exactly what you're saying right now is exactly where I was gonna end the show we're gonna circle back to that please without okay. a doubt because. Okay. The whole point of us having this discussion on Narc Abuse TV Network is not because it's Narc Abuse TV Network. That's not why we're doing this. We're not doing this so that everyone can like, comment, share, follow Leon. But I'm telling you, like, comment, share, follow Leon, uh, yeah, especially even so on TikTok. But the main reason we're having this discussion for Narc Abuse TV is because people often want to try to fix someone they cannot fix. And often people want to try to understand someone who doesn't want to be understood. So I've got to read stuff to you. There's so much happening over here. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to fast forward through a lot of stuff. Uh, many of you have written, uh, some of you know, Leon and some of you don't, some of you understand, uh, the growth and aspect of Leon and many of you may not. Um, uh, but I'm going to highlight some things that, uh, were written here. And Crosby says, talking about the, the narcissist that she dealt with, her, her, her ex, he did not care when I backed off, but when I went no contact completely, it was a different story. He wanted to come back. Not a chance. I had enough abuse to last me a lifetime, is what Look, she says. She's right. So what happens is, when you back off, it's like, yeah, thank you, but then... Whoa, whoa, whoa. The narcissist says that? You mean the narcissist? Because, because here, women, real women, like Ann, women want what they want from a man that can't give it to them because then it becomes pressure to us. It's like, well, damn, whoa. Oh. Then they back off. It's like, cool, she gone. But when you back off and we realize that we can't contact you, it's like, oh, she <laughs> got away. Oh. oh, no, 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 no. You got away. So she got Ann. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she got to protect, not only, she got to protect herself for a long time because he'll still pop up because we don't like to lose. And what she took away from him was his trophy. And okay. took away the trophy. Okay, so she, she was the, she was the trophy he could put on the shelf and go like, I pick that up anytime I want. Exactly. I let it, I let it collect dust because I go get me some new ones and put it up here. That's the way he was viewing her. Yeah, it's like the it's like the person that gets away from a serial killer and then tells the police and then he gets caught and he goes to jail for life and get executed. That's an execution for a narcissist. When a woman, when, uh, it, okay, when you back off, like whatever, back off. You leave, you relieving the pressure on me. But then now I can't contact you. Like, oh no, 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 and no, no, no. I don't like this. He's gonna keep coming back and coming back because she's a trophy that got away and told the police about the serial killer and put and got him executed. Got him, got him locked up and got him executed. Yeah. She's right, one hundred percent. Dude, seriously, that's pretty. That's that's pretty deep. Uh, same as my ex narcissist, he thrived on seeing me in pain. Uh, and then Dot John uh, Four uh, says hi, Leon, to you. Uh, uh, the book goddess says she was told I had nothing to cry about. Uh, and uh, you're getting some love. I'm just going to read. Uh, jump in anytime you want. Just tell me. Danny, stop. Uh, or see, I think Danny said um, when you tell them what they what they didn't do right, that gives them time to go away and improve. They are exactly right. Like I just said, if you tell me what I did wrong and I go in and improve, I'm coming back to impress you and I'm coming back to bury you. But at the same time, you're, we're also, let's say, oh, let's, I'm the narcissist. And somebody uh, goes no contact with me, and then, but before they do that, they tell me what I need to work on. I go and improve myself. That person that told me that is really putting a noose around their neck. If they let you by back telling me, well, they, yeah, I'm sorry, I take it back. Yeah, what you said. 
if they let me back in. If they let you back in now, but then, that, but isn't that me then turning around and going like, well, hey, look, you said I needed to work on this. I've worked on this stuff. I've gotten better, and now you're not going to take me back. And so now I can make it like I'm the victim. The narcissist, crazy. The narcissist does not like to be the student. So in that case, if she tells me what I no did, no no time out, that's the best one I heard in about a year. True. The wait. You need to, I don't know, a shirt or something, dude, something. Wait, the narcissist doesn't like to be oh, the no. student. Because, dude, like. that is deep. So Everybody like, wants to, knows they got to be the student sometimes. No, like somebody said, they don't, we don't like criticism. So now, if you tell me what I did wrong, and I go yes. back to myself, and you isolate me, now, instead of me being the master, now I'm the student, I'm the puppet, and I don't like that. And you. Uh... But in my mind, if you get away, and this is how we deal with the women that get away, like like Ann, she got away. We deal with them in our mind that yeah, she she just wasn't and she wasn't ready for me. She couldn't handle me, so she she ran away. She's probably in a psych ward somewhere. I guarantee she's gonna be single for the rest of her life. All we tell us ourselves these things all the time, negative things, but we don't want to see her happy. Okay, so you don't want to see her happy. Oh no! You convince. Uh, uh, let's. I have to say, I'm the narc. So I don't want to see Anne happy, uh -uh. but I'm going to convince myself that she left because she didn't measure up and couldn't handle me. To me, that's right. Because Dude, we, that's crazy. Can't, can't <laughs> lose. we don't like criticism, and we don't want to think and feel that we were less than, or actually, what they say we were less than who right, we right. are. No, we don't want to. No, we don't believe that. I, yeah. I've been through that for years. I've had my ex-wife told me things, and I was like, it burned me. You talking about sitting in negative vibrations when somebody's telling you about yourself? I'm like a little kid. When I met Pax, when I was in therapy, the little my therapist, my fourth one, was a little white lady about five feet tall, about 100 pounds. And she just digging in my soul. And I'm sitting like... <laughs> She and whooped, she whooped in your mind. She I, whooped, yeah, she put the can of whoop on you. I had to sit there because that was based on my retirement. I had to get my therapy, uh, my counseling for seven months. I was there. I'm, I walked out of her office too, but I had to go back because I was getting in trouble for leaving my sessions. But she, that negative vibration was killing me. I was like, I got to get out of here. Calm down, Miss Walker. Just relax. I'm like, how the hell you want me to calm down, relax? You telling me from a woman, you telling me things I've never heard from a woman. Nobody, no woman has ever said these things to me. It made me sit down and <laughs> be quiet and listen and cry, <laughs> and drink a gallon of water. I was losing my mind. I would love to have been a fly on the wall and watch your butt on fire because you sitting there trying to figure out a way to make your feet get up and leave. And you know, if I leave, I'm done for. I'm sitting here eating top ramen the rest of my life because I can't even get a dollar from these people. Listen, I was <laughs> you had to sit there and take it. I was so upset in her office. I, my nails, I was digging my nails in the arm rest on that house, rocking. And she's like, you want to take a break? I'm like, yeah, I'm out. And I went to get the <laughs> little, drink some water. That little, that little narcissistic demon inside of you was kicking your ass. <laughs> was kicking. This is going like, this lady trying to exercise me out of you. She's trying to, she's got to get me. <laughs> but see, that was like. <laughs> you needed that, though. Yeah, that's when, I, that's when it started. I started healing because that's like. When she started teaching me these things and telling me these things I was holding on to for 30 years, 40 years, I started wow. feeling lighter. I started feeling healthier, you know? Yeah. I started, then I started reflecting on how I, you know, mistreated my ex-wife, my ex-girlfriends. And I was like, I left that place every day with a headache. I leave there, then I go to the pharmacy, get my Tylenol, and get my serotonin, what they call it, medicine I had to take, serotonin, whatever it was. Um, well, butrin, all that other stuff. I was like, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta get out of here. And I wouldn't even go back to work. I would go home, and this was like at noon. After I sat there for two, three hours, I'd go home and just go to sleep. I couldn't function because my I think she was like disrupting some evil stuff in my spirit, you know. And I needed that because for so long I suppressed my childhood yeah, I suppressed yeah, yeah. issues, I suppressed caring and loving and all of that, and I never forgave my perpetrators. I never forgave my mother, my father. You know, I never even forgave your, my your body. Your body was tired, man. And I tell your, people, your your body was your nervous system. It was propped up, amped up. It was, but it was like we was, we got to go to bed. We got to go to bed. 
your your head your head must have been ooh dude your head must have been hurting yeah but my my headaches weren't just because my PTSD my my narcissism or my my migraines my headaches were because of the hell I had going on in my life the people that I, I never forgave anybody I was always suppressing my feelings and emotions and it was just I had a heart attack because I think it was because of all of that stuff you know and so um yeah you were hey take I got to read something to you uh coach samia again forgive me if i said it wrong i know you've been on the show before thank you so much for being here now it says yes narcissists don't care about emotion my father-in-law passed away and i wanted to hug my ex he pushed me and said why are you making a big deal essentially out of it uh you ever found yourself i know you touched on it and highlighted it when serious occasions came around either to be happy uh, or to be sad for people who you were essentially abusing, that you belittle their emotions for their events? Yeah. She's asking a question. Did I ever do that? No, I'm asking you that. Oh, say have, that you ever have you ever found yourself when someone else, uh, your ex or whatever it may be, and they're having a good day or they're having a bad day, that you belittled the emotions that they were having for that moment. Yeah, because I made them think that they just wanted some attention. But in actuality, you were really the one wanting the attention. How sick, and how sick is that? Yeah. Yeah, that's why I had to slow it down because I'm processing it. I, I got to read to you some more. But but have you recognized, I'm just going to throw this in real quick before I read. I got to read this stuff here. This is why the people come to the show, and this is why they come to see you. <laughs> so, they have stuff that they want to say. Uh, but have you recognized in others or sniff it out, feel it, see it in others? Do you see it in other men, the Leon that you left behind? I see it a lot, Paxton. That's why it's really hurtful to me now because 85% of the people that I don't call people followers, leaders on TikTok and Instagram are women, 85, 90% of women. Uh, when I posted that video about uh, the silent treatment, it went viral. I had like maybe five, six men reach out to me about that. We talked for a week or two and they disappeared. Yeah. And they yeah. disappeared. That's why this world, we have so many problems because men are less emotional. We don't show it like women do. We don't speak up. We don't speak out. We don't, we don't forgive. We don't want to love. We don't say I love you. Enough. Women do that. That's why the world is the way it is right now because of men. We have we cause a lot of problems. And men hate when I say this. We cause a lot of problems and issues. And especially in the black community, relationship-wise, we are we're divided. We are divided because we have men out there telling other men, she should weigh 110 pounds if she's five, six. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm five, nine and a half. I should weigh 187. I weigh 225. I'm obese by American Heart Association standards. But re relationship-wise, we are divided. We are in trouble because we're on one side and the women are on the other side. And you got people like me and you that are in the middle and a few others in the middle like, hey, you know, let's do it like this. Let's think about yeah. this. I don't care about being a high value man. I care about valuing my life, valuing my friends, valuing my, my mm -hmm. life, valuing yeah. my... I don't care about money. I made 20, 20... Hundred twenty thousand dollars in the Navy for nine years. I was a piece of crap. High value man. They said makes this much, has this much, has this much, has this yeah. much. I don't care about this stuff. Yeah. I want a healthy, fruitful, re respectful relationship where we can communicate, not take turns talking. There's a difference. Yeah. We communicate. Yeah. I'm not cheating. There's no infidelity. There's trust. Yeah. There's honor. There's There's no lying. No lying. No cheating. Yeah, right. All of that. But that you putting people in categories. They rank in women now. You know, what is she on a scale of one to ten? Oh, she's a, an adjustment. Right. Hey, yep. how about ranking yep. women on their personality, right, which I love? Yep. How about ranking women on their ability yep. to take care of your butt, which I love? How about ranking <laughs> women on the ability to, to help you with your kids that are not her kids, which I love? How about ranking women on the ability to listen, to talk to you, to help you grow, to help to groom you, to teach you, to lead you? How about we rank women on that? If we do that, we have a whole bunch of women in these 10 categories. But no, we talk about their breasts, their butts, their lips, which is like saline or whatever they call it, Botox, most of it's fake. Let's 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 rank rank these men on, you know, having fat in the back of their head. Rank these men that don't work out. Rank these men that sit at home 
and boss the women around that, that, that don't allow the women to do the right things or do what they want to be or do what they want to do or become who they want to become. How about we rank the men? Rank me. Leanne, you're five, nine and a half. You're, I'll put you in about a five because I don't like short guys. I'm cool with that. You got a bald head. I don't like bald heads. I want a guy with, with, with full hair. Okay, then whatever. But we not be, we don't, we're not fair with it, Pax. We're not fair with it at all. And that's why it's in every community, black, white, Asian, Latino, whatever. But the black community is being divided. Because those men that have a hard time understanding or dealing or being able to relate to women are listening to other men that are putting women down. And so you got women like, who do I date? Why do I date this guy? Oh, uh, I'm not a 10. I'm a 6. I'm a 4. I'm a 5. But I got my degree. I got my house. I got my car. I got a credit score that's 850. You know, I got a son that's taken care of. You know, I got a great personality. I'm a provider. I'm a protector. I know my love language is acts of service. I like to communicate. I like to be touched. I like to be helped. We don't talk about those things. And it sucks. Here I am. You, people like me and you, we you, talk about it. But the other you men like, Sam, you weak. Bro, I just served my time in the military. I did 30 <laughs> I come from a very dysfunctional family. There's not a weak bone in my body. So I'm going to talk the way I talk because I've been on the wrong side of mistreating women, right? I'm 56 years old. I'm on this side seeing all these men doing all these things. I want this woman need to do this for me. When I come home, she need to have this, 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 and this. Well, women are leading in the military, okay? Women are leading in Congress, right? Women are doing the things that men can't do, don't want to do, or are supposed to do. And women are supposed to be barefoot, pregnant in the back in the kitchen. Those days are long gone. That was thirty years ago, forty years ago. You've met some people. No, no, no. You, you there? You still there? Laughed at Somebody? and talked about. Not, men don't understand where I'm coming from. You know, I'm just being real. At the end of the day, this is what gets me. They talk about the women, 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 women. But at the end of the day, guess what? They going through their phone. Yeah. They want a woman. So, I mean, that's what I was going to lead. I was just about to say that. I said, they say what they want to. And you've met people who say what they want to. But the bottom line is, I'm going to say something that I see on the screen here. Uh, please forgive me. I'm going to say your name incorrectly. Uh, Tamana. Tamana. Uh, she says, beautiful, Leon. Uh, she, you have a lot of positive comments here. But a lot of it is because you're willing to talk about it your experiences, and what you've gone through. But what I want you to do for me right now is, is take a listen to this. Just, just bear with me. I'm going to read something to you. A number of things. Uh, no empathy. They don't have sympathy for when you are ill. That's sick. True. Something Dan Danny said. Um, then we have, it starts in childhood. Yes, change is real. Uh, it's it's about your will. That's essentially what the book goddess says. True. Uh, she's saying there. Uh, Coach uh, Samia says, uh, because it's all about them to get attention. Uh, that happens. I need to know uh, what led you to change is a question that the book goddess is asking. But I, let me let me throw something else in here that she said. Let me see if I find it here. She's at, She mentioned that, what led you to change, but she also had an earlier question for you. I don't want to miss her question to you. It says, was your intention to any relationship for sexual gratification and not to be alone? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, it was both, actually. And then her other question was, she is uh, complimenting by saying, it starts in childhood, but change is real. Yeah. Uh, and if anybody, I'm just going to throw this out to you guys. It is all, oh, yes, she was a guest on the show, but I am telling you, I have her book right behind me. Uh, you, need, you check out her book. Uh, go to her page, The Book Goddess. Uh, and you, she'll talk about her childhood and where she is today. Just you guys have to you, get book, it. You, you, the, uh, the book is, uh, I think it's uh, Unbound. Oh, Hold on a second. It's uh, Unbound 100 Days of Intent, a memoir and trauma healing journal. Uh, nice size book. Uh, if anybody want to take a look at it, I had her on the show. She's doing a great job. She has a, a beautiful podcast that she has started. Uh, anyhow, everybody can take a look. It's talking about that people can change, and you don't just because your childhood. You can. Similar, <laughs> some bad stuff happened to her, just like you mentioned about yours, but she was able to rebound from it uh, as a woman. But I just wanted to get some of these thoughts in. 
just answer, jump in anytime. I'll read them at, uh, and give a little pause in between. But yeah. I didn't want everybody to feel they were left out. No, they were people, trying to reach. People need to read that. So, a lot of people tell me, a lot of women, mostly women, not men, you can't change. It, it, it'll never happen. I've heard this. Uh, you can change. I got to tell you, God didn't create us this way. People yeah. create us. Yeah, so, yeah. Saul of Tarsus changed. He became the Apostle Paul, but I'm going to leave that alone, not make this a religious show. But it was good. People right. change. People change, right? It, it can happen. But there are those who don't want to, and uh, we can't do nothing with that. Uh, if, if, you, if you're sick in the beginning, uh, they show cold empathy. But later on, that fades. Um, uh, I need to know. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I need to know what led to your change. That's where I wanted to tell you. The book got to ask that. Go ahead. There were many things. I, you know, when I cheated, I hurt my fiance, hurt my wife, I hurt her family, her mother and father who loved me dearly. You know, I be, I was a bad example for my children. I wasn't following my father's legacy. My father was a very monogamous man. I was very promiscuous. I had a lot of issues. I got tired of being tired of being sick. I got tired of not believing in God. I got tired of forsaking God. I got tired of misleading God, which I could I did that by not being a, a good human being. And my karma was always instant, Pax. My karma, when I do something wrong, when I cheated, when I lied, when I misled a woman, my karma was always instant. Thank God I'm here today. I didn't get killed. There were two women that wanted to kill me in the 90s when I was a recruiter. Cocky, arrogant. I got I got afraid. I became afraid. But overall, I just, I just got tired of not being a mature, grown man. I got tired of being that 19 year old, 11 year old little boy when I was in my 40s. I got, I got a question. I got a question. Do you notice some of those same tired, excuse me, I would take that, let me rephrase that. Do you notice some of those same scared, uh, upset, angry, uh, eight, nine, 10, 11 year old boy that you were back then? Do you see some of those people parading around as coaches? Oh, yeah. On social media? Yeah, all the time. Yeah, I do yeah. too. All the time. Yeah. You know? I, I find I find it amazing, and they and they have an ability. I'm talking about males right now. Uh, I've been noticing it, and a few other podcasters have been noticing it too. And have reached out to me, and and uh, and they they don't want your voice to be heard, or or this discussion, and in, in certain shows to be seen and heard, uh, because they're making money off of these women who believe that these guys are really trying to help them, and they're fake. They do. And you know what? I did a, I'm going to tell you some facts. I did a video. Oh, we'll talk about that later. That's enough story. But talk, going back to when women pull away from a narcissist, you really, once you know what he really likes, you know how he really feels when you start giving him what he really likes. I, 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 what, what, dude, are you, is there, do you have a bug in here in my studio? So how do you know? That's exactly where I was leading this, this discussion to go. He, it, he, you you don't give them what they want, which is whatever mainly attention. But if you if you don't give them what they want, then watch and see what happens. Watch their body language; they'll start. Yeah, they'll, yeah. They'll be very very agitated because now you're not feeding yeah. them oh, their little, their little spirit. You're not fe you're not feeling yeah. their and they're like yo. You can and she 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 whoever she is could ask the guy, "Are you okay?" Let's say Leon. Leon, you okay? I'm like, yeah. What's up? I'm cool. No, a dog on well, I am burning up on the inside because <laughs> you're not feeding me, you're not stroking my ego right now. Yep, yep, yep. So when a when a woman gets to that level when she knows where she got him, oh yeah. Keep pushing that person out of your life. Because you, if you know that you got them and they know that you know that you got them, it's gonna be a struggle if you stick around. Yeah. It's gonna start turning back on you. Once you get them to that point, once you get Leon to that point. Get him the hell out of your apartment, your car, your house, <laughs> out of your soul. Get, get the keys back. No, no joint account. No. You don't even want the same keys back. Don't even them. want the note. You change the locks. You you move to a whole nother location because yeah. they recognize. Uh, they recognize you figured them out. Uh, At least just said, do I still get visits from that eleven year old self? And what? The, yeah, I still. Yeah, the little kid is still there. Um, I welcome him back. I think about why he comes to visit me in my mind, uh, but I don't go back to it. He doesn't have the power over me anymore because I forgave him for accepting who he was as a child and not fighting back. I forgave my uncle. I forgave my cousins and my babysitter. So that was a good question. Yeah, I, I got a um, 
the book goddess, by the way, also says that you guys follow each other on uh, on uh, TikTok, uh, and so you guys will be able to connect there. It, maybe I don't know. Maybe you, you want to do her podcast. I'll leave that up to you guys. I'm not just just throwing that out to you. But I do want to tell you this: she does put down there lots of wolves pose as coaches. Uh, yeah. That has been uh, recently what many people are reaching out and letting me know. Uh, I've been uh, fortunate to have a, a beautiful set of guests, but uh, there are people that uh, are out there, males mainly, uh, posing as if uh, they are authorities on certain things. And many women are being sucker punched, as I had one person just recently tell me. And then they're trying to get pictures of that person or they're trying to do, you know, they're doing a bunch of things behind the scenes that have nothing to do with coaching uh, and have nothing to do with, hey, I just want to tell my story or have you on my show. I want to, I want uh, to facts because I'm going to tell you something. I never... I never planned to talk about narcissism. I knew this since I was 21. I came home. I got the book, uh, The Five Love Languages. I had it for a year. In March, I started reading it, and I stopped, and I started writing my other book about narcissism. I came home in June, and I was like, hey, let me just do a video on narcissism. And boom, it blew up. Um, what's her name? Campbell. Erica Campbell posted, and it went viral. And I was like, oh, shoot. I didn't realize how bad off I was. I knew how bad off I was, but I know how bad off this stuff is. You didn't know how bad off you were and others could, could relate to it other than the people that you had hurt. Yeah, and then I, I started doing the videos and it was getting yeah. like, let me just keep helping people, helping people. And that's what I do now. I post it and I, I go back. I try to, those comments are, it's a lot of them. I get hundreds, thousands of comments. I try to, I try to reply to all of them, but I can't. I spend an hour a day, maybe two hours sometimes, to say thank you, I appreciate it, and I got to stop because they keep coming in. So I'm sorry for those that I didn't answer, but I can't do it, you know, do all of them. Because my videos are <laughs> like 50,000 views, 80,000 views, but my the important part to me is the fact that I can, I'm able to talk to the people that, re, that view my video and, and comment it and say, and ask questions, and I, I help them, you know, and I always say thank you, I appreciate you for you know responding or commenting so to me it's not it's not about money i don't get anything for this people want me to do consultations and uh, i had a friend say yeah just start doing that work on it you know blah 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 i'm not an expensive dude i'm not i don't want i, I don't i don't rip people off and i, know, I'm a, I know what you mean yeah. <laughs> it sounds like my show i know what you mean yeah, yeah. but so. but see at the same time do you find that when people reach out to you they're like uh, guides in your life to kind of keep you as it were on the straight and narrow of the success that you've had. Do you, are they, is it, does it help you emotionally that they kind of say, Hey, keep going. Hey, yeah. thank you for this. Just as much as they can turn around and go like, Hey, you know what? I wish you stopped talking. Cause it, you know, you, I hate all narcissists and it reminds me of this. Mm -hmm. They're going to go one to the extreme, yeah. but do you find that you benefit from both? I do because uh, if they say thank you, I appreciate it. It lets me know that I'm on the right path. If they say, hey, man, you need to show the hell up, it lets me know I'm on the right path. So either way. <laughs> I was going to say that. You beat me to it again. Yeah. I don't know, you're on a roll today, man. You just you should just produce the whole show, just direct right. the whole show. But, but essentially, you know you're on the right path. Isn't that how that happens in life, right? When, when the haters raise their head, it's yeah. because it's, it's touching a point. Just I as sure as when a person gets really quiet, is still touching a point. Just because yeah. they're not saying anything, it's also striking a point when they get real quiet because that means that that information is having an effect. Yeah. Uh, the smear. Let me, let me ask you this. The smear campaign, it continues. I don't care. He is a victim. Now crazy mindset. In other words, the smear campaign that a narcissist can do can have an overwhelming impact on the victim's life. Yeah, I did that, uh, and it was bad. I didn't realize what I was doing. I didn't call it a smear campaign, but I don't. I didn't go live on social media with it at all. It was like talking onesie twosies here and there. But I had to stop doing it because the person I was talking about, I created her to be who she was. Because oh, I time out. Well, you can't just drop that. You can't drop bombs like that and just keep moving. Mm -hmm. The person that you were talking about, you created that person by your Infidelity. ongoing pattern of. Dis dysfunctional behavior. So how how sick and crooked-minded and evil is that to get mad at her 
because I made her who she is. And now, now I don't like who she is because I made her who she is, you know? And I was like, dude, just, and it was, she was a good person. Very good. And I had women have told me some things. Leon, you turned my, my life upside down. I'm like, oh, God, I turned your life upside down. I didn't like hearing those words. I heard a lot of innocent women. And so I got it. And I've got to, I'm going to, I'm going to jump on something you said there uh, it, it, that could easily people miss that. You're literally saying these were innocent women and everybody can take this a number of ways, but I'm going to say it because this is free TV and I'm putting it out there for everybody. We're not talking about, you know, you're cheating, she's cheating. You guys are both being, uh, we're talking about, she was trying to do what is best as a well-balanced woman, taking care of family, taking care of you. I'm not saying it's a green light to do either way, good or bad, whatever she does, because we have to have our own integrity and we could falter just like anybody else. But I'm saying from your words, you're saying this woman did not deserve to be treated that way, let alone I didn't deserve to create that problem for myself by being unfaithful. I did that. And just... and caused and then you turned around and smeared her. As it were, you said it wasn't smear campaign from your yeah. perspective, but, but you didn't have social media, but go ahead. I was trying to talk to people that would take my side. How sick is that? And I was, <laughs> how, okay, because I want to just spend a little bit. How sick is that? <laughs> you knew that you had already done something that created, you, you already put a landmine and a bomb in the relationship. Mm -hmm. But then you went out and acted as if, even though you still had the match in your hand, you acted like, I didn't like the dynamite. I really didn't. She did. It was her fault that I cheated. I told myself that. And I made myself believe that. And then guess what? I kept cheating. And it caught up to me because, I mean, it ended my, my all of my relationships, but it ended my marriage. And just sick. You know what? Pax, I was very, very good in the Navy. And I'm not doing this to be like in a, on a grandiose type of mindset or stroke my own ego. But I'm telling y'all this because I was very, very good in the Navy. I did very well. But then I go home and I was very crappy. I was a crappy husband. I was why? Well, why? I, I know why, but why? Well, because at grandiose, right? At work, okay. built up. Good to go. Yeah. I'm got the good. uniform. Got the uniform on. All appearances perceived. All well here. Keep keep walking. Nothing to see here. Then I go home. I knew There's that a, I, a lot to lot to see, but nothing happened. Nothing happened because I created my home to be what it was, because of my infidelity and my lack of care, empathy, sympathy, all of that. So I go home. I had to be a B, a B I T C. Right. Yeah. yeah you had you had to be. A, be Jerk about it. yeah right. Well, I had to be like a little simp. I had to cower down. Yeah right right right. right. Oh, okay, caught. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Because I got caught cheating. Well, yeah. you, you didn't want to. You didn't want to. You don't want to give that up because you 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 went into the world as it were. You left outside that door. You went so one place and you were a genius. Right. And now I got to go home and I got to kowtow to the fact that I got caught is essentially what you're saying. Because because right. you didn't got caught, you weren't going to be changing your behavior. And so I created that atmosphere in my home and I didn't, couldn't live with it. I couldn't live with it because I still said, it's your fault I cheated. But then, you know, uh, she was well, who she, who she had became, she was supposed to become to protect herself from me. Uh, or that plus to make me see what I did wrong or help me grow. And I wasn't trying to grow into a marriage. I wasn't trying to stay married to reach our 25th anniversary, which I should have been doing that, but I knew nothing about that. I didn't care. Okay. So you said, not trying to grow. Okay, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna mention a couple of things that you said. I mean, you got so many good things that you said. I wrote down here. I'm just gonna pick a few. No commitment. Emotionally detached. Wasn't trying to grow. Um, misleading, luring women in. Um, out of no matter what the narc is doing, you you firmly highlight a person should start pulling back slowly. Even if your emotions, their emotions are running high, male or female, narc, don't, it doesn't matter. Don't your, get caught up in that because you go too fast. You asking for, you know, well, helter, helter skelter. But
But the thing is, Pax, if you go too fast, you make it obvious. Oh, okay. I get it. Okay. Okay. Too fast. So too fast. If you go too fast, you don't see what he or she is not giving you. If you go too fast, you don't give yourself time to understand, wow, I was too much. I was doing everything right. I'm good for this person. So you do a little bit at a time to also understand and feel your growth when pulling back. Because some women okay. are addicted and attracted to these people. They can't see anything else. All they see is that person. So you take back a little bit at a time, starting with what that person really likes that you do for them a little bit at a time. And then they'll go, oh, I don't, you haven't even given me a massage. It's been, you haven't given me a massage in two weeks. Got it. But you have gave her a massage in six months. <laughs> Nine months, a year. And, okay. and you didn't get your one. And you're like freaking out and like you don't even you don't even acknowledge that I did anything with my hair today, let alone brush my teeth. So now, right, you don't you, you, that little one time that they massage you or did something <laughs> like now they like, oh, they you realize that they are not doing it. You're doing more for yeah. them than for you, and they've been doing that for years. So it's not it, you have to pull out slowly so that you can see that you can see the big picture. What did it say you can't see the picture for the frame? How do they say that word that, that quote can't see the frame, do the picture, whatever? You pull out slowly, pull back slowly. Okay. See what what's gonna happen is you're gonna start seeing their reactions. You're gonna start now, seeing now, so should, should be prepared. Uh, um I'm the narc. Somebody's with me. They start pulling back slowly. They should be prepared to see their reactions instead of just having all of a sudden this reaction coming at you because yeah. you're just doing stuff thinking, I'm not gonna do this anymore. I'm not gonna do but you need to systematically be prepared to move slowly, pulling back the things you're doing because you're recognizing that they're not even paying attention to you at all. Also, you don't want to put yourself into shock because you don't, you don't want to start um, dealing with withdrawals because women that gave to me, they like to give to me. They like taking care of me. So when they it, stopped- It became their lifestyle, their pattern to give to you and their focal point was to you. Right. Therefore, so, the, therefore you became their drug. They, yeah. So when they start weaning themselves off of their drug, it has to be slow. Because if you do it too fast, you're going to come back to me so I give you more. Instead of you bagging off, now you're like, oh, I'm not ready for this. A lot of women tell me that I'm not ready to leave. I don't want to leave. Because they did it too fast, and they dealt with that shock, and they dealt with withdrawals. So a little bit at a time. You got to remember, Pax, when you – when you leave in a narcissist, you are withdrawing from a drug. I release dopamine in her mind. I come around, it's like happy, happy, happy. All of a sudden, I'm gone. Yeah. like, oh, sad. I am your upper. I am your down. Yeah. Your suppressant, antidepressant, mm -hmm. all of that. This is like being in, that, that's, you have to have your rehab. I did a post about yeah. your rehab. You got to go mm -hmm. into, be around yeah. people that care about you. Be around people that like you, that love you. Mm -hmm. Be around people that that celebrate you, be around people that believe in you instead of being around these people that don't do things for you, can't see anything for you, don't want anything for you. Then you're not getting in. Everybody goes through therapy, but nobody goes through rehab. It's yeah. two things. I went through yeah, therapy. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then I did my own rehab. I started putting myself around. I, I put my rehab was the opposite. I put myself around the people that I hurt. Hey, man, yeah. my boys. Yo, man, mm -hmm. I know I, I was supposed to hook up with you and your, your boy last night was supposed to go drink or shoot pool, whatever. I know I sold you out, man. I came late. I didn't call you. Come on, Leanne. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm sorry, bro. I'm yep. sorry. The women. You know, I, I did, you know. So you got to put yeah. yourself in rehab, good and bad, because you created that atmosphere. I created that atmosphere. atmosphere. So I got to be willing to go deal with it. If yeah, you're not a person, yep. you're not ready to go deal with your therapy, or you don't think you have problems, you don't believe in God, you want to follow God, nobody can help you. Nobody. So I had to put myself in that fire and make myself a better person. Melt myself down and come back up. Hopefully... Thankfully, I did. We cannot do that for someone else. They have to make that decision. We cannot continue to focus on them not making that choice and decision is what you're saying also. We have to let that narc do that. We Don't tell them what they need to improve on because they're just going to go and do that and turn around and wait to get back in because now they want to hurt you more. So yeah. they go from being vulnerable to vindictive in a heartbeat and we don't want to give them the fuel to do that. You've got three questions, I believe, sitting here that I need to get to. They've been sitting there for a little bit, so I don't want to ignore you guys here, but let me see what we got here, Leon. Uh, uh, 
Leah's channel is a date place to have triggers. <laughs> uh, and the other one, it, oh, shoot, dog on it. Hold on, just bear with me. Uh, did I lose it? Hold on. Uh, what if the narcissist is the father of your child? Uh, no, hold on a second. Let me finish the rest. I removed, no, I removed me and my child from him. He is blocked. Do you think this will help him better his self to be better to women? No, no, no. First, he's going to get up. Two things happen. First, they get upset, and then they become vindictive. Uh, they, let me read one. Okay, go ahead. Let me read another one to you, and then you can put them all together if you like. Uh, do you think it's healthy for people to watch these things? Uh, is it good for you? I am five months out, and I walked five months ago. Is she saying or he's saying that is it good for them to watch us talk about this? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think so, because I don't. Is it because nobody nobody tells the truth like this? A few people do, but if you're going through life looking for somebody to help you, looking for why this guy's that way or why this girl's that way, if you don't want to, if you can't sit down and hear through social media somebody that's been doing that stuff, then it's going to be hard for you to even sit down in therapy because you're going to get up and run away. You got to sit in that negative vibration like me, like now, and hear it. I'm not pointing my fingers at people. I'm telling people watch out for somebody like me. I don't want men to become me, who I was. I don't want women to date who I was at all. So people say I'm a trigger. I don't watch Leon because he triggers me. I'd rather, you, I'd rather I trigger you here than, than a, a, a vindictive, self-centered, egotistical, jealous man put a trigger to your head. Sitting here and listening to me, I, I try to help people. But these triggers, I know, I get it. But it's, if you don't know what's going on in your life or who you're around, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be victim to one. It's a it's a number of things come into play uh, when we you this is the third time you've been on the show. I, yeah, I think the third or fourth. Yeah, right, third time. The fourth is uh, November nineteenth. You'll be back. Uh, then uh, today's the 29th. Anyhow, the, the reason you, you know when I reached out to you, uh, the whole objective was. Um, I'll say it again. Many of you may not be be familiar with it. You can always Google it if you like. And it, some of you are quite well aware of it. It's called a barbershop. And in black communities, these conversations actually happen. <laughs> I'm just, this, this has, I'm not making this a racial thing because that's not my thing. I am just being honest. These conversations actually happen uh, just like they would happen in a therapy session. And for some we understand that's why this is free TV It is not something you may do. But outside of that, there is no disclaimer or anything like that or the, you, the trigger warning. People do that all the people have books that trigger people. Uh, people, as one lady told me, I don't let my kid watch this or that because my, my husband did this or that to him. That's understandable. And some of these things may be understandable uh, for you. I've had so many people. I am being honest. I have I maybe have had three people, Leon, and this is the third show, that have said, hey, I'm uncomfortable listening to him. I, I cannot and don't respond to that because I have seen too many times people will either cross the street or be uncomfortable about this person or that person. Or that. It's going to happen. But this conversation and you coming on, I cannot even show you how many people. But check this I out. Have have been have benefited from you being on. Uh, go ahead, please. I appreciate. It. I'm sorry. I've heard women say, "I'm you make me uncomfortable." I'm I'm comfortable, right? But check this out. I know a woman that said I made her uncomfortable, but she's been with the same narcissistic person for five years, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But she will be comfortable with taking on everything he's doing to her all the time. But here I am telling, trying to tell people, help people. But giving them a way out, how to stay up, how to stay alive. They, that quote I read, it said, people die at 25, they're not buried to 70. You know how many women are dead now, walking around? Oh, yeah. oh, buried? I've, yeah. I've had people come on my show and in the show prep, you know, we did show prep. I've had people, yeah, I've had people tell me stuff and they are psychotherapists, they're psychologists, they're therapists, they're well known, they're, they're entertainers. I've I've had some really amazing people tell me that they're dead inside with uh, who they're dealing with because that person is a narcissist and they can't, they can't talk to them. They can't do anything with them. And yet they feel 
crap. Uh, anyhow. That was my mentor. I'm 56, he's like 64. He became a psychologist in 1979. I talked to him finally for the first time. I hadn't seen him since 1976. He said, man, you are giving me counseling, and I'm a psychologist. Yeah, I, 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 I've had a few people watch your stuff, and they are just that. They're psychologists and psychotherapists. Therapy, people who, who have been on my show are therapists, and they were like, hey, you should have Leon. You should have Leon on more often. I was like, well, I can't. The man's got a life. I can't have him on all the time. You know, it, it helps people along the way more than it, than it hurts. And so, and so the women that tell me I'm uncomfortable with listening to you, they are suspended, stuck in suspended animation over one person. They don't do many things. They change their lives. They're dying on the inside. Because while Leon, I've been in, I know women have told me, man, Leon, I've been in therapy for 18 months, and my therapist has never said anything that you said to me. And I'm not I've I've had people write. I have. I've had people write me and tell me that about your show, that I can't believe I'm paying somebody to. And he just said that, and it just. I totally get it now. What I'm dealing with, who I'm dealing with, and and they start to understand that person just utterly does not care for you, and yeah. they are never. They are never going to commit to you unless they plan on destroying you a little bit later. And then they'll they'll keep you around, but that's not commitment. Their commitment to you is to destroy you. That's a commitment that narcissistic people have. I'm going to be wow. I've heard, I have friends that have never been diagnosed like me have said, man, I, I'm committed to destroy. <laughs> I've had, and it gave me chills. Wow. I had a friend, he's narcissistic as hell. Told me a few months ago, I'm going to destroy her. And guess who it was? His ex-wife. She's not even with her anymore. She got away. She got away. And he's still... Man, somebody said that on here about the stalking. That this is the stalking thing. You're serious about that, right? That that actually the narc will do that. Stalking is <clears throat> it's about as real as your face. Okay. I did it, and I didn't do it to hurt her. Pax, when I stalked my girlfriend, I was 25. You were 25, dude. Uh, you're seriously. You 25. You had a job and the whole thing. You. You could have went on about your life and gone about your business. Couldn't detach. She got away. Actually, but you were, but you were not emotionally attached to anybody per se. I mean, how were you attached? I was attached because I was in control. Uh, you were attached to the power and influence she that you took, had over her. It took my yeah. That's what I was attached to. But don't get me wrong. I was addicted to her. I was attracted to her, and I didn't want nobody else to have her. But she took my power, and she took. Her body was my body. She took my body away, you know. Took everything away and gave it to some other dude. And I was like, yeah, no. I lost my mind. I'm going to talk about that tonight. I may post you, it tonight or tomorrow on TikTok, but. You reap you re what you sow. <laughs> you reap what you sow. It came back to bite you. Oh, so look, I got to say this to you before we, we start to end here. I'm going to read a couple of things to you. Everybody's saying a number of things. Thank you, everyone. I I get to save all of these and go over them and we'll tell you thank you later on and, and, and uh, pass. If I can, Leon, I'll pass some of this stuff. I have quite a bit of stuff to pass on to you from the other shows that I just haven't done yet. I just got to get time. But um, it's about accountability is what the book goddess says. Leon, thank you for the validation. I, was, I wasn't crazy. I'm sorry. That just made me laugh. I, I hear that a lot on these shows. People come on, especially women, and go like, I wasn't crazy or I'm not crazy. Well, let me that's, tell them. that's what people say when you come on, Leon. I know. The let women me... who are not in the first shows come on and go like, thank goodness, I get it. Go ahead. Don't ever, these, the ladies, don't ever let a man or woman, don't let, ever let them know like, oh, I think I'm going crazy. I feel like a little Don't different. say it. Do not, because you know what? The Big no-no. Wow. Don't you ever tell that person that you feel like you're depressed or you are going crazy because they will continue going. All you doing is validating why they're with you. Oh, dude, sorry, you got to wait. You're validating why they are with you. What their intent is for you. That's what their what intent you're is. You're letting them know you're having success. Yeah, 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 yeah. You you letting them know it's working. Because in my mind, oh. when a woman told me that, 
I feel like, man, I'm just like, I'm losing my mind with you. I'm like, thinking to myself, that's what I want you to do. Wow. Huh? Don't ever tell them, don't, don't, don't you ever. Male or female. Don't female matter. narc, male narc, don't matter. Don't if matter. they're that self-absorbed, no commitment, and how'd you put it here, uh, emotionally detached. Okay, I got one for you. I, I, I see everybody here. Ann Crosby is saying great information. Thank you. Ann is in, in uh, Ireland, by the way. Thank you, Ann, for, for being a part of the show. Can't wait for the post. Uh, please forgive me. I'm, uh, I'm just going to call her Lady T, uh, Tama, uh, Tamana. Uh, she's saying that she's going to wait for your post. There are some things these women need to look at about themselves. That coming from, from Lisha. Very uh, Alicia, she, she's saying that there are things that we uh, we as the, either male or female, if you're dealing with a male or female narc, there are things that we may need to look at ourselves, but at the same time recognize what? That essentially we can't keep feeding people like this because they're out to destroy you. I'll and that's just, that may be hard to swallow for some people. I'm just saying. It's hard. Right? Yeah. But it's a fact. Facts. My, my new account is Leon R. Walker. My old one what you guys look at on my new account now is I just started that. My old one I had for five or six years. It was built up pretty nice, but it got stolen. So um, don't don't follow I Inspired One. He took it. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, it's Leon R. Walker. So that's a brand new account, and I'm trying to build it back up to yeah. I was at a thousand, but it'll get there. I'm fine. Yeah, was, right oh, now, right now, somebody's saying, "I wish I knew that 30 years ago." What's part of it? What oh, you're yeah. talking about? Yeah, it's still you, it's not too late. It, it's, it still happens now. It's, it exists now. Be careful with who you're uh, dealing with and contacting on social media. It is not always what it seems to be, unless they are upfront and straightforward with you. Uh, when you go to do a show with them or whatever it may be, or their coaching, uh, we've we here have received a, a, a few individuals, women who have uh, said that uh, people, they've been offered coaching either through a chat or whatever the case may be. And it's uh and it's not, that's not the case. Leon, you've kind of laid out how to know who you're dealing with. Oh yeah. By emphasizing the things that motivated you before you had somebody, would you say five, four, about a hundred pounds, uh, start poking you and, and going at you. Going yeah. at you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Every time I every time I think of that, as hey, you as five to five nine, five nine and a half, and you just lady. you brought shoulders and you said, and that little lady, she like a little pit bull. Like, okay, Leon. I said, voice in my head. It may probably not how she sounded, but but then, but some. Go ahead. When I would go back to work, I was I would leave the VA and go back <laughs> to the job, and I would get an e an email. Make sure you come back tomorrow at seven o'clock, Mister Walk. I'm like, leave me alone, lady. Go away. Hey, she she was in your head. She was all in your gray, in your gray spaces and the gray matter of your brain and going like, Leon, come get healed. Come and do the accountability for yourself. Hey, so seriously, what was it, what was it like for you when you had, and you probably only did this once, but what was it like for you when you actually had a moment in which you really cried before, before, before the one who created gravity, before the one who made the planet, did you really cry? I, I know. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to attack your manhood in front of everybody, but and, and you had this moment where you really let it out as you started to make progress. I know you probably only did that once in your whole life, but it was, <laughs> did you really kind of went, oh, man, I just got gut punched uh, by the one who created everything. So what was that like for you? My girlfriend that, that got away in 1992. <laughs> that got away. The way you say that, you seriously. That's you, not, you, that's you were a bad dude, man. I'm serious. You would have, man, I don't know what neighborhood you were in. You had it good because, man, if they would have caught you in my neighborhood when I was growing up, <laughs> but nobody would have ever saw you again. You would have been caught. I was around people that were just like me. So I was like. Oh, there you go. That's what happened then. Okay. How do we talk? But my girlfriend in 92 that got away from me that and I always say she got away. That's how my narcissist narcissist thinks. I cried, bro. And I was I'm a, when I do that video, I'm a, I'll probably do it tomorrow. Tomorrow, maybe the night of tomorrow. But it's gonna be about uh narcissist stalk. We stalk. That's gonna be the name of it. But um <clears throat> when she got me, 
And then I cried in therapy. So from 1992 to 2015, it was like, <laughs> like no way. All you all you need is a good cry to make make a turning point. And you had you had a couple of good ones. Okay, mm -hmm. so check this out. Here we go. I know it now, but dang, the info you shared is so valuable. That's from the book goddess. Uh, you get the textbook after you never get it before. Mm -hmm. uh, so now everybody's saying they they can understand. Um, uh, I am Bobby. I'll, I'll get to it. Um, uh, somebody asked me to read their question. Um, don't feed the narcs. That's coming from Danny84. Um, you've got uh, a number of people who have agreed with you. Cry equal truth being revealed. Uh, so that's coming from Lisha Walker. Yeah. Uh, Danny says, if we knew before what we know now, we would never have gotten involved or seriously would have gotten out earlier, oh, less, yeah. dam less damage. Which is essentially why I want you and others that have been on the show uh, to, to seriously talk about this is because the information is indeed valuable, but the action that goes with it or the wisdom that gets connected to that and the discernment and the understanding that comes from this information, then a person can make a balanced decision to do what you highlighted, to pull back slowly, right? Uh, it's one, it's, this, is, this is not simply entertainment here. Uh, there is heavy education that you're passing on, and I appreciate you for that. Yeah, I, I always appreciate coming on your show, um, Pax, because you you keep me engaged. We talk, people, your, your your audience is engaged, but yeah, they have to. I mean, pull back slowly from the narcissist, so that you can. When you pull back slowly from a narcissist, that's when your therapy starts. It's not just when you go sit on a couch for six six months. No. You start your own therapy, so therefore, when you go in, when you do, or if you don't, when you do go into therapy, you go in there with some healing already, and you go in there with you learn, you practice these things, and still, so women still going to therapy, and then after that, you not you need to go into your own rehab by being around people that like and care about you, people that celebrate you, people that understand you, people that don't want to hurt you, but when you pull back slowly, your vision opens up. I've had it done to me. Man, I started seeing these things. I started doing this. I started doing that. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. I was going to leave you, but you left me first. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> breakdown. Yeah. Narcissistic breakdown. The narc, the narc breakdown. Okay, I got to read you two questions that are here before we go, and then we're going to have to leave here. Hold on here. Let's see here. Bobby uh, with an I says, can kids be supply for a narc? I'm not sure if the narc loves my kids or if he's using them. Oh, yeah. They'll use them to make themselves feel better and turn them against mommy. Because oh. mommy's not going to tell me how good of a person I am. Mommy's not going to tell me anything. Mommy's done with me. Mommy's going to talk about me. Mommy's going to put me down. My kids, daddy, we love you. You're the greatest. Uh. Check this out. Mommy's boyfriend is ugly. We don't like him. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Uh. That's crazy, man. That's low. That's low to be using the kids. Yeah, we, oh, yeah. We heard mommy and her boyfriend arguing. He left early. Mommy's boyfriend smoked that. You never smoked. Blah, blah, blah. It's true. Uh, it, okay, I got, an, I got another one for you. Go ahead. Uh, well, I'm sorry. Hold on one second. Uh, Danny, Danny84 says, my mental health practitioner told me that it's important to not become obsessed. You know what's happened to you now not to become obsessed with what's happened to you now that you know it now. It's, uh, the health practitioner said, move on. I was, I was ticked off when she said this to me that essentially told me to move on. Yeah. People don't want to hear that because they're not ready to move on. That's why I tell people, Pax, in my videos, I will never say leave. Leave them now. Leave her now. No. You have to be prepared for that. It's like withdrawal. You, you go through withdrawal. It's like getting off a of heroin, getting off a of crack, getting off a of meth. You don't tell. I don't care if you got a, you've been in a psychiatrist for 20 years. You got a PhD. You don't tell people move on. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear how can I better yeah. myself and detach yeah. of my addiction to this person. This is how you do it. A little bit at a time. First of all, you realize what you are not getting from that person. You realize yeah. there is no reciprocity. You realize that you love that person but they barely like you. And you're a good person. You're just with a bad person. That's all it is. 
You were the person that doesn't understand you. You were the person that you try to help and rehabilitate. You were the person that doesn't understand that that's very dysfunctional and doesn't understand healthy relationships. That was me. And I was at a drug to these women. So you can tell people just to move on. I hate when people say that. Oh, they, you don't tell people just move on. You tell them how to get away from it. First of all, you build yourself up by seeing what you're not getting from that person. And they're not even there for you. Yeah. You've got... You, you've laid down some truths that, and that are getting tons of hearts across the screen, and uh, a lot of people agreeing here. Need awareness, discernment, and understanding, then choose based on the information you now have. That's right. The trauma bond, the trauma bond that was from the book, Goddess, by the way. Let me give credit to her. I didn't say that. She wrote that here in the, in the chat. Uh, the book, Goddess, uh, Sherry wrote that. Uh, Anne says, the trauma bond be easier, Leon, pulling back slowly. Uh, so it's easier to pull back. Uh, if we just do it slower instead of just abruptly trying to break that trauma bond, it could be catastrophic uh, for some people. Danny84 says, I do believe this whole narcissistic abuse is its own pandemic. Uh, the book goddess says kids are the hook. And Danny says people being isolated in the house more has brought out so many narcs. Yeah. Uh, you know, actually, you know, social media has truly proved to be uh, a feeding ground for many. Uh, who who portray themselves to be helping other individuals and they're using it for supply. You, on the other hand, prove to be a man uh, who, who I'm going to say this, and I'm saying it in, in a very joking way, but with a lot of love behind it, who puts up with coming on to our show, but I, I, I appreciate you immensely for doing so uh, I, because I, a lot of people are scared to have this discussion. And we haven't even done the last one because I've been saving the best show for the last because I want to get into something. You ain't even, I ain't even talked to you about it. will make other people go like, I ain't even watching them too because they're talking about this. I'm cutting that off, but I'm going to get into something with you. We'll talk about it ahead of time. Go ahead. You're going to say before we have to go. We've gone an hour and 51 minutes, but we better call this show to a quit. Go ahead. Um, I can't remember what I was going to say, but yeah, the thing is, you know, somebody made a comment. It made a great comment, but um, um, yeah, I always talk about not being addicted to getting getting away from it, uh, withdrawing from the person, you know, going through withdrawal because you will. Um, you can't just shock your body and take yourself away from somebody you've been seeing every day, talking to it every day, you know, yeah. uh, whatever. It has to be slowly. Uh, like again, Pat, so you can see, because a lot of times your judgment is clouded. And that's what uh, I think Danny was Brain saying. Brain fog. Yeah, Danny was saying brain fog uh, would be less foggy if you came out slow. That's right. Uh, and, uh, and, and then go ahead, please. Go yeah, ahead. When you're in a ship and you encounter fog, we slow down. We make other ships aware that we're in this fog by blowing the whistle, by going slow, by ringing bells, by everybody being more aware. When you're yeah. in fog, let other people know that's part of your rehab. The people that care for you, the people love you. Hey, I'm hurting. I can't get over her. I'm trying to get over her. You know, let other people you know that you're in this fog so we can bring you out slowly. Yeah, yeah. And then when you come out, you'll see who the hell you've been with, and you would not believe it. Yeah, that seems to be a common theme since we started this. More people will go like, I cannot believe that person. When they really start putting it together. But when you're in it, you're right. You're saying you're saying that when a person's in it, they can't really see it, is what no. you're saying. No, no, no. They, they, don't, they can't see it. And then when other people tell them before they're ready to see it, they don't want to see it. They go into uh... They go in denial. Is that what you said? Because they're not they're not ready. Like I can tell him, 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 or her, her, all of this about, about this that person. They like I don't, I'm not ready. I don't want. That's why you don't tell them to move on. You don't tell them just get over it. No, you give them a little bit of time. You help them because they they have to feel it <clears throat> and be ready to like detach and like something's not right here. This feels off. And you help them with that. You help my dinner. Um. um I know everybody's heard me say this already before, but uh, like 400 times, but we are going to call the show to quits, but I have to read what's here. Uh, thanks to you both. Such a helpful insight. hundred uh, percent. Thank you. Anne. I'm um, going to say good night to everybody here, uh, but I have to read these two. Um, narc equals shell laugh out. Yeah. So the narc is just the shell of a person. In other words, I've come to realize that all anyone is to a narc is supply. A kid, a dog, a wife, girlfriend. Yep. Uh, yep. They're not They're not your friend because uh, they never have those. Uh, I came out too quick. 
brain fog was very cloudy, Danny says, and and then um, we have to work on yourself. <laughs> uh, actually, the expression is work on yourself. You see it? You work on yourself. <laughs> it is what it says. That should be a shirt right there. Uh, that's from Lisa Walker. Danny, last comment here. Oh, you guys got to stop, okay? I got to leave. Trauma Bond, Laker game coming on. Trauma Bond had me begging her to get back with me. He left when I left. What, he, left yeah, too soon is what you're saying. And you gotta not not even you, when you it was abrupt. And then when you when you know what happens when you leave abruptly, I know we gotta go. When you leave abruptly, you go, oh, did I do the right thing? You question. Uh, you question. You second you guess. You didn't give yourself time to what they call it process it. Process your your withdrawal. Your next move. Yeah. Oh, your withdrawal. You yeah. need to process what you're going to be going through. Be prepared for it. Safety nets. Uh, keep yourself busy, exercise, you start learning how to cook, take awesome. dancing classes, m making new memories to, to deal with the withdrawals. Uh, okay, everybody, I love you guys. Relationships are mirrors. Check, check yourself, yeah. is what Lisa, Lisa uh, says before we end the, end the show. I agree. <laughs> My tongue doing it. That's three shows for me today. This one took uh, one hour and 56 minutes. We've had fun, my friend. I appreciate it. Uh, November the 19th, put it on your calendar. Uh, my man, Leon, will be back. Uh, Captain, I'm going to start calling you Captain L. I should get you a shirt that says that. Captain L uh, is in the house. Uh, so I appreciate it immensely. Hopefully we got to cover a lot of the points that uh, I know I did on my sheet over here and you got to do on yours yeah. so that we can talk to this community uh, that deals with narcissism and everyone that showed up here and will watch this back later. Like, comment, share, follow Leon's page if you are so inclined to. I am encouraging you to do so because there's information you will hear that you will not hear, uh, well, anywhere else. Thank you, Leon. I appreciate all the work that you've been doing, and the shows that you've been on, and the people you reach out to. But uh, I humbly say uh, thank you for making uh, this show uh, a place on the map where people can find good information. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it, man. Thanks, Last sir. words. Last words before we go. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Before we go, just make sure you um you inspect what you expect out of people. Um. Talk about their path or get to know them. Their because if you don't, you cause yourself a lot of hurt and a lot of pain. Not only talk about their red flags, but be aware of their white flags. Do people do surrender to their addictions and their egregious ways? People do go through therapy. They implement it when they get out. Don't just say, don't just go with people that oh, I've been through therapy, I'm good. No, therapy is all, this is therapy for me. So they have to yeah. do it, implement it, be real about it, and be consistent. Be consistent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I hate, I'm with you on the whole be consistent. Oh, I got to do this. You're the first person I get to do this with. Hold on. Um, my daughters are my executive producers. They always are getting me different things for the show, equipment, other stuff, all that stuff. Well, I got this one, and you're the first person that's going to get it. Here you go. You ready? You get this, man. You get the big thumbs up, bro. All right. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it there. My, my daughter got me this the other day. She used it on the show. And my youngest daughter, she got me this. Uh, they went shopping, and she's always giving me little trinkets for the show. So, Duro, great show, man. I loved it. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. I'll see you later. Have a good weekend. Everybody stay safe, and uh, please stay away, from the, stay away from the knucklehead. All right. All right. We'll see you later. Right. See you later, my friend. Bye-bye. Right.